So, welcome to our next talk. How environmental friendly is software? You probably know that software is a lot of resource hungry thing and doesn't run well on um, all the hardware. Um, so, browser and games don't really run well. Green IT is something that's a lot of being talked about and people think about it quite a lot. And there's a lot of research on how can these things go together and work together. Two things about this is first research, second uh, certification. So there is a certificate of what is sustainable software. And we do have two fantastic speakers right here, which are going to talk about this. This is Marina Kühn. She is a computer scientist and is has been working as a programmer for a lot of years. Now for 28 years, she's worked at the Umwelt Bundesamt, which is the Federal Office for Environmental Issues. And there's Dr. Eva Kern. Um, working in Bittefeld and please give a big hand for our first speakers. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. We're really excited about this and uh, it's a lot of people that we didn't expect that. Uh, we thought we would have a small group here, but it's really exciting for us. So, yeah, so that was a very, very uh, pleasant greeting that we received. And yes, now we're talking about um, protecting the environment, uh, conserving resources, but what we shouldn't uh, um, confine is the resource of knowledge because knowledge uh, multiplies if you share it and that's what we would like to do. So we would like to share uh, our knowledge and our uh, insights from our research. Um, we do have this agenda here. So first I would uh, explain why we as the Umwelt Bundesamt uh, have this topping at, at all, why we are talking about this. So what's our uh, concern there? Then Eva is going to talk about our research results and has, she is has going to present a lot of interesting results of uh, measuring software actually. Be excited about that. Um, um, I like her talk, so I am always keen on listening to this. And f as a closing, I'm going to explain the Blue Angel, der Blaue Engel in German, because we try to apply what we have found in research and with uh, as the seal from the Umweltbundesamt, this is the Blue Angel. And I'm going to talk how we're going to proceed. So, the backgrounds and the motivation. I you see, you know this image. On every event that you, that there is a lot of uh, um, mobile devices being held in the air and you know and I know it's not only technology it's not only hardware that's a lot of uh, software going on in the background um, a lot of people when they stream or record um, uh, record a performance and they send it to their whatsapp group that they actually um, um, multiply data so the consequence is here. I'm going to show you the newest numbers of the Bundesnetzagentur, Federal Office for in Network Infrastructure. And you see, um, we see um, a very, very strong uh, rising tendency uh, of the data volume that's being shared. It's actually doubling every two years. And you know, if you think about your bookshelf at home and every two years it was double, that's what's happening with data. That's what's happening right now here. So these data have to be um, stored. They have to be shared, which um, happens at server farms, at computing warehouses. And that means that the demand for computing resources is rising and has been rising. And we do know that we have to expect um, a very, very strong, even dramatic increase um, so our colleague, colleagues from Scandinavia have some prognosis here, some looks into the future. And if you look at the green um, curve, then you can really be afraid because there is not only more demand. It means we have an extreme increase in power consumption and in um, rare metals that we need for the production of servers and chips. And we would like to stay on the blue line. So that means that on all fronts, not only in the computing warehouses, that we need to be more efficient regarding software. Energy consumption does not only happen in um, 
uh, server farms, it also happens in decentral computing setups. Um, so you might know about Bitcoin and that Bitcoin mining just consumes a lot of energy, but um, if you think, uh, so you might know that Bitcoin mining takes place in China where the power is made from burning coal and that means when we need to reduce our uh, carbon footprint, uh, then that's a development that we cannot say that's okay. We have to say like at least uh, is there a more efficient possibility? Is there something that we that Bitcoin mining is connected to the um, the price of energy, so the lower the price, the higher the gain I have from, from, from Bitcoin. And Bitcoin mining takes as much power as the country of Austria. That's not peanuts, that's a lot of energy and that's what happens through software. So I brought an example here. Um, we just talked about how software uh, contributes to the power consumption, but it also contributes to hardware becoming obsolete. Uh, so as an example, here is Windows and how much memory capacity Windows needed in the start and how much uh, processing power. And then we compare it to Windows 10, we can see that there is a very heavy development that happened. I can see right there in the back, yeah, I mean, Windows 95, a lot happened since then. Uh, Windows has become a lot more powerful. But yes, but uh, if you see the, the Windows XP row, you can see that Windows XP could do with 1.5 gigabytes of hard drive space and Windows Vista already needed 15. Um, the, the same with memory. Uh, Vista needed a lot more memory than Windows XP and that didn't, and I assume that that didn't uh, linearly uh, grow with uh, the feature set but it's uh, uh, product of software blow up. Uh, so a couple of years ago when I had a spreadsheet program, I could just use it to calculate things and nowadays I can edit pictures with it. And now we have to ask ourselves the question, is that even necessary? Do we need more and more complicated hardware? Um, for more and more complicated software. Um, so, in summary, on one side we have the problem that software contributes to more power consumption. Of course, not the software itself co uses the energy, but the hardware uses it, but the software sends the commands that make the hardware use the power. And if I, if I write the software more cleanly, then it uses less power. And by writing more efficient software, I can also make hardware be sent to the tend to retirement less early. Um, if you think about the rare metals in our devices, we have very, very valuable devices here. Um, uh, thinking about data formats, about distributing data, that's also a problem. And the question is why politics has not reacted on that? Well, um, they did not beca because it's very, very much more difficult to regulate software than, than hardware. So a law on, um, if you think that there is regulations on hardware, if, uh, who knows the, the EU design um, uh, regulations on hardware, it's about 10% in the audience normally know about this, most people don't know about this. There is, uh, there is a law that regulates its computers, TV devices, uh, they have to have a certain level of uh, energy efficiency uh, or they may not, be, may not be sold in the EU. And that's why in 2012, uh, computers and notebooks have become much, much more efficient. Uh, but sadly, this does not happen in software because it's much more difficult to do. I have uh, a couple of uh, cutouts here of the scandals that we had in the uh, past months. So uh, a setup box doesn't go to power consumption mode, printers don't work. 
Um, there's no more updates for all the systems. Y you know about this. Well, that's the background why we say, well, we, we have to do research here. We have to do some work here. We need to find a method that, um, the impact, that, that uh, measures the environmental impact of software and assesses it so that we can formulate uh, boundaries that we would like to have on software and finally arrive at some criteria that are measurable that are verifiable to have environmental and sustainable software. Now, I would hand it over to Eva, who is going to present that area um, and uh, present what her team is doing and some beautiful results. Yes, so at the Umwelt Campus Birkenfeld in the near Trier, we are uh, researching on green software. What is green software? Well, we didn't know in the beginning, and now we also do not know in detail, but we were thinking about, well, what is software? It's what, what drives hardware power consumption. So here is uh, something to make it more palpable. Here's a graph. So the software doesn't have a cycle on its own, like producing, development, using, and then uh, uninstalling it. So that's uh, the life cycle of a software product. It also has impact on the life cycle of hardware. So hardware is being produced, it's being used, and then it's being disposed of. And software is actually um, using the hardware, and but it's also um, defining can hardware be used or can not be used. So how can we make it more lean? How can we reduce the hardware resource consumption? And well, in the end, that has something to do with the environment because the hardware life cycle that's, um, is, is, it is connected to the environment and we want to reduce the impact that hardware has on the environment. So we wanted to look at uh, we wanted to look at, at the concrete mechanisms, how does it work. So we didn't only do it graphically, we were looking at, okay, can we develop criteria that um, could tell me is a software environment friendly or is it not? So to make it palpable, what are the uh, effects of software on environmental issues? So the first question is energy consumption, of course, but the other thing is also hardware consumption. How much hardware is being used and how heavily is it being used? And we were trying to come up with a method how we could uh, get a grip on this. And the method is a three-step process. So first what we do is we look at the product and then we see, okay, what can it do? What are the functionalities of the product? What, uh, what does it do? And how? what is the most common use case for a pro um, for a product, and then we have the standard usage scenario in German standard nutzung scenario, and th then uh, so that's the scenario that's the common usage scenario, and that's what we can measure. That enables us to do step number two, that is actually measuring. We go there, we record the standard usage scenario, so we have a software that uh, executes uh, um, certain functions. And then we measure the energy consumption and the usage of the hardware and we record that and those data so that we can um, analyze it. So first we have the measurements and on the other hand we also have data that uh, are for example in the in the documentation, in a wiki, in a handbook or so that we can analyze the software product as a whole. In step three, we analyze it and we came up with some indicators and then we just try to measure and figure out, okay, how well does the software do with these indicators? And we would like to give feedback to the users as well as to the developers uh, to show, okay, where is potential for optimization? Where is potential for uh, f for um, to get more awareness. So what we want to do is also some awareness raising. So how does the thing look? So for example, there is a standard user scenario for um, uh, text processing for browsers, content management systems and databases. And well, that's uh, nothing surprising here because we would like to have the core functionalities that are typically used in the software. So if I use a word processor, I edit text, I have something 
like a table of contents. Um, I would like to uh, adjust the view and then I would like to save and export it. So that's the common usage scenario that we have looked at uh, for certain product groups. So what does a certain standard uh, user do? So that's not a person that only uses one uh, part of the software. We would like to have the user scenario using a couple of the very typical fun uh, functions. So here is a standard user scenario of a media player. So nothing surprising here. So I open the video. Uh, I might switch to full screen mode, uh, I might uh, skip forward and backwards in the video, might even change the speed. Then I go to um, standard speed, then I close the software. And uh, if we do this by an automated scenario, that takes about eight and a half minutes. Because we need some time where, where something is actually played in the media player and where we can actually um, look at the certain parts and com components. Well, how do they use hardware? How do they consume hardware? Okay, so regarding how it's measured, how does this actually look? So in Birkenfeld, we have a small laboratory uh, that we call the software laboratory where we have a workload generator, uh, so that's just one computer that uh, just replays the user scenario and then uh, automate th it's automated because we want to uh, redo uh, it uh, multiple times so we can eliminate measurement errors and then this is all played on a system under text which is, which is just a normal PC. Uh, which processes the work and uh, then on that we can measure how much uh, power it uses so there's a, a measuring device on there to measure that and then there's uh, another measurement software that uh, analyzes which hardware components are used and then this generates an a energy efficiency report which can then be analyzed by the developers to see what the energy efficiency of a specific piece of software is. So this is, for example, what one of those evaluations looks like. So um, there are results of various um, product groups. Um, so this is a media player. When it started, for example, there's a big spike. Um, and uses a lot of energy and then when a functionality is switched it also uses uh, more energy in a small spike. Um, this can be seen because um, it's uh, exactly measured when everything happens so we can correlate those things. So one single example doesn't really help us a lot um, to see differences so that's why we have a second media player that we measured the same thing with uh, to see to see the, the progress of the energy usage and we can see that's pretty similar and that's why we use multiple video players to analyze the results and so in conclusion we have the, the watt hours used by various media players in comparison um, so there is one media player that used 0 0.833 watt hours and uh, the other one only used 0 0.479 watt hours even though they did the same thing. So that's one thing that we could see in the energy usage but we could also see how the processor usage and the memory usage varied and uh, was in total consumed. So the same functionality with different software used resulted in very different results. So we also uh, didn't just uh, develop the measurement method, but we also developed some tools, because if only we do it in one small laboratory, that's not that helpful. So we created some tools uh, that enable other people to measure these um, factors with the idea that maybe in a software development process people have the uh, possibility to measure their own software to, to work as energy efficient as possible even during development. So one of those tools is the so-called OSCAR which is a measurement platform where you can upload uh, the data, it's programmed in R and it will analyze the data that uh, comes out of the measurement system. These are, for example, the, the, the details, which is maybe a little too much to explain now, but as an example, 
the, all of the statistical data is used here and provided in a nice format. And then there's a secondary tool, um, which is a Excel to XML tool, which uh, enables providing the data in a better format. So this is not only available for text uh, processing and browsers, but also for, um, for other software, and we are still working on uh, enabling more different software. So we have looked into sustainability management softwares, and um, uh, because we thought it would make sense to look into those tools themselves, because they are kind of related to the topic. And so we want to uh, maybe contribute to uh, how those kinds of software. We will also look into image processing, we will look into web shops, and we will look into PDF viewers, and we're on those to, and to validate our methods uh, for the future. So what we also saw is that there are two main, three main influences for the measurement uh, results, which is, uh, for one, the kinds of software we used, um, which is also dependent on the reference system. But uh, yeah, as, as we saw earlier, when we look at different kinds of software, we see very different kinds of energy usage profiles. And depending on the kinds of software used, with, in this case, two different text editing programs, we can see very different energy usages. And here again, we can see that the, the work process, the energy used, uh, auch, uh, again, varies. And we again saw what, what were the influences, the kinds of software, what software used did have an influence. The next one is the common usage scenario. And um, again, we saw that uh, it again makes a difference how the, the software was used, whether we wrote something or we just looked at a page in a text editing software. So all the methods have to be uh, observed critically to see what kind of influences actually influence the measurement results to see if to, uh, to lessen the errors in the measurements. So again, in in the results, we can see that writing in a text processor consumes more energy than just looking at it in reading mode. The last one is the reference system. So the reference system is what we call the program where the, the environment where the program is executed, what computer we chose for various criteria. And we can see that on this device is where the software is running, and this is also an influence onto the energy usage. And we can see the various influences that we see, for example, for various reference systems, there may be various energy usages. Again, in the measurements, we can see that for different systems and if the reference system is older, then the differences are usually higher. And we wanted to develop a method that is as uh, solid and valid as possible. And that's also, that, and those are these three influence factors. So for example, this one is for text processing again. Uh, we have a usage scenario that we thought of and uh, measured two different text processors and measured the and looked at the, the spikes in power usage and got for the same usage we got very different power results. And then again, this in conclusion for the differences, because we often get asked, does it even really make a difference? And yes, these are for singular uh, environments, very small differences, but when you think about how many text processing softwares are used for longer than 10 minutes every day, then we think that there is an approach there to look into 
improvements to, to look further to see how we can uh, develop differently so less energy is used and also provide and create transparency because this is an important part and that's why we worked on creating a certificate for this. Yes, uh, before I do that, I would like to get back to that slide that uh, shows this fact. So here, ah, wrong direction. So, yeah, so regarding word processing, we have looked at it a look and uh, if you go one back one more, you can see we at some point we stopped uh, measuring and you see we uh, looked at what happens afterwards and if you look at this up there you see that there's uh, you have a nice baseline so for so someone who does energy consumption measurements that who that, uh, that person loves baselines so something where you always get back to like the, the, the background noise so um, you don't see this in the lower part of the picture you even think the baseline is up there and now look at the point when we saved something um, they just kept watching and you see the software software at the top after saving it's quiet if you look at the software below it's it's still moving. We don't know what it does. Maybe it phones home or something. We don't know what it's doing. So a developer can can recognize, okay, what, what is happening there? And we had this one point during the research that was curious to me. There were some very, very enormous peaks. So what was happening there? Could you tell me what, was, what it was? Uh, I don't know, the, the blinking cursor. Yeah. So the blinking cursor in a software program took a lot of uh, power, uh, it, it, it soaked a lot of energy and uh, there is actually a faulty library uh, and the library has not been changed and now we have quicker processors and it still peaks when the cursor blinks and we want to get attention from the people in the room people who develop, uh, develop software these tools are free so take a look at them and take the time to do more efficient uh, programming and think about okay what libraries do I use and are are they still efficient maybe there's more efficient libraries for using that but now for my part so I would like to introduce the blue angel for software so if I just said yeah well we took um, more or less a year but not so long as we projected because um, it gave us a really solid base, so the research work that they did. So the idea is, uh, or the goal of the Blue Angel uh, certificate is we would like to um, certify software that is very efficient on the hardware and doesn't use as much of the hardware so that even old technology has a chance of running the software and also that energy, energy consumption is uh, low. Uh, as low as possible and so these are the goals that we had at this point the blue angel symbol uh, if you've uh, been to a hardware store or so store or buy the bought some paint you have seen the blue angel symbol uh, you have also seen it on the toilet paper and uh, there's also blue angel symbols for computers there's going to be blue angels for servers and storage technology and there's uh, also a blue angel for data warehouses and uh, starting next year, there's going to be Blue Angel for software. So uh, the Blue Angel doesn't want to set a standard. It wants to certify the best of the best. So we have very, very ambitions re ambitious requirements for that. Because having high ambitions, that is uh, a quick thing to do. But how do you actually test that? So that's what we tried and we think we succeeded. We found a couple of indicators that, um, that we can check on software and a couple of them we could use for the Blue Angels. So before I show the criteria, I would like to explain how the procedure for the Blue Angels works at the Umweltbundesamt. So we are the institution that develops the criteria that's uh, strongly connected to research in almost all cases. Next thing we do is that we um, present the criteria to the public 
and we would uh, like to have discussions. So we have this expert round table. Everyone who would like to can participate. Uh, of course, we invite people. We invite people who are using this, who are developing the software. We are talking to uh, um, open source people. We're talking to uh, um, people from the industry. And then we discuss the criteria. And we also discuss our minimum uh, requirements that we have. Then we have the jury for the Umbeweltzeichen, for the Blue Angel sign. There is uh, a couple of actors from the side in there, so we have churches in there, we have environmental conversation groups, um, we have um, people from uh, representing the cities in Germany, and they decide whether to have the, um, uh, the certification or not. And so this fall we could convince the jury that this is a useful uh, thing to do and we now we can go forward with the Blue Angel certification for software. So what's the criteria? So as I said before, resource efficiency, that's a really, really important thing. So energy efficiency and using uh, and making usage of the hardware, that is something um, that's important to us. Second point is how long can I use the hardware? So the life cycle time actually of hardware. So uh, when do I have to retire a device um, because the software is not lean enough? And the final criteria is we would like to have um, an autonomous user that, so that the user can decide which module would I like to use. Um, can I switch to a different uh, software product at all so that he's not tied to a certain product so that there's no vendor lock-in at this point, waiting for updates, for example? And is it possible to actually completely remove the software from a device? Um, sounds easy, is not as easy in all the cases. So. Here is the criteria. I'm not going to do go in, into super detail here, but uh, it's it's already published, so can, you can read it. But I would like to um, show you a couple of those. So, what we would like to do is we would like to have measurements for all the time. So, um, so the usage um, contract that we have goes uh, until the end of 2020 and we don't expect just measuring at the beginning and then having just a protocol of that. We expect that the software uh, consumes less and less over its life cycle and we uh, expect then when the software is being updated then we uh, don't have more uh, energy consumption as the software um, Matures. So, and there is also a list of reference systems uh, with the Blue Angel, and people who um, uh, who want to ha get the Blue Angel certification, they have to prove. <laughs> They have to prove it runs on five-year-old hardware. So transparency is also very, very uh, important. So that regards um, interfaces, data formats. So we do expect that a user is possible to uh, communicate with other software products um, if the software is designed for that. What we would like to do uh, have is modular software. So the user decides, do I want to have um, um, uh, image processing with my spreadsheet or not. So the user should have the autonomy to decide uh, I want to have lean software. We don't want any advertisements in the software that is not necessary. We want to do, do not want to, hand to have any uploads or for phoning home. So uh, software containing ads is not going to be certified. And finally, we have this final evaluation and then you have to prove that the software actually has improved over the time and what measurements you did take as a company or as a de the developer to actually improve the software on these criteria. And now there's, meh, well, meh, that's something we were not super happy with this because we had to restrict very, very much enough as to which software we could use. So we could uh, only include desktop top software while knowing that a lot of software is running on servers, is running on the internet. So either we would have to be very arbitrary with the criteria or we could have very demanding criteria uh, on the desktop. Um, and so that's why we proceeded this way. But uh, I can make the promise we're going to continue, we're not going to wait. We're not going to wait until the 
uh, the research uh, uh, until the certification is uh, done, we are going to um, include more and more software types um, in there. Another thing is there is not going to be a Blue Angel for shooter games or games. So we're going to certify games, but we are not going to certify games that um, promote violence. These are not going to get um, the Blue Angel certificate. So what are we uh, um, going to uh, do next? So we would like to have minimal requirements for the energy efficiency. So we are measuring right now and getting some ideas. Can we actually formulate, a qu a qu uh, can we quantify the number that we would like to have? Uh, we would like to enlarge the um, uh, types of products that we can use and the scenarios that we can do. And there's also this idea of having labs, several labs who can do these uh, certifications. So we'd like to encourage people to install a uh, certification lab so that people who would like to gain the Blue Angel, that they can um, actually have a certified lab that can do the measurements. So that's it on the Blue Angel and software. That's what Eva and her team and we did, and that's the research. And the Umweltbundesamt is also continuing on this. So um, alongside the um, energy wasting of energy, we have another topic that is very, very pressing for us. I've done this uh, in 2000 already. And that means the interdependency of software and hardware, so that um, the software actually, um, actually uh, regulates when hardware needs to be changed but now we have household tools that um, are run by software and products which used to be a uh, usable long term and uh, now short term products you have to throw away because there's a software update that is not possible or that is uh, not changeable so there is going to be a research project that we are going to start in uh, that we have started in this year and I've seen a couple from our research team so could you just stand and just wave and please ask those if you would like to talk about this topic so we we d we know it is a problem we would like to talk about how can we have criteria for a law so that we can have actually a european law for the uh, eco design um law that says okay when there is hardware there is minimum uh, there is um, minimum requirements for the software okay so that's it uh, so there is a possibility for questions but thanks a lot and thanks for listening to us so we are going to use the break to just say hello these were your translators that's FL Berger Oscar and Ian and now we go to the Q&A so, thank you for the talk. We have a lot of time for questions, so anyone who has questions can line up on the microphones. So, anyone who wants to leave, please use only some of the doors. Okay, let's start with a question from the Internet. Okay, so a user is asking, did you look into how the energy usage changes when the whole tracking that is implemented into modern operating systems is in included in the measurement? So for example, in Windows 10 there are lots of tracking mechanisms. So we've, we haven't looked into um, operating systems yet. What we did was we measured to find out a basis upon which we can um, measure, we can d distribute that data carefully onto. Go to microphone number one. Uh, thanks for the talk, it was very interesting, so I want to be thankful and not complain, but so it's all consistent, but it does only get into a few areas, a lot of the energy usage happens in the cloud and no, uh, even though I think that we should use our own computers more. Uh, I am wondering whether you're planning to get into cloud systems more and look into those, uh, look into virtual machines and containers, what's the energy usage of streaming, 
what are the looming goals for the for saving on energy in these areas are privately used computers that more and more become uh, less relevant and mobile devices that are technically very energy efficient um, but offload more onto the data centers will you look into that more it would be interesting and probably also easier to regulate. <laughs> Maybe a shorter question would be better. So indeed, yeah, we will continue on in that area of research. We will invest more research into that as well. We have in, we have invented technologies to um, regulate the efficiency of data centers. We are in discussion with the responsible people in that area um, but we will not be able to measure all of these products in side of this uh, Bundesamt. There are other products which are um, definitely better. What we want to do is um, enter discussion. I would be happy to see the intelligence inside, I t inside of the IT branch um, to make software in more intelligent. We are very far away from efficient devices, even though people are um, other of other views. That isn't really correct. Do not listen to that. We did measure that, and um, we do know that um, computing centers do have a computing um, requirement of 15% more than would be necessary. What we do want to do is, um, together with other professors from other universities, we want to form groups to... So we want to have professors that form groups and that do actual research uh, to have it in a study curriculum so that people even when they're studying it have the knowledge to build uh, software so we're, we're not um, stopping that. Okay, let's go to the next question. Not only ask short questions but also get closer to the microphone. Next question from the internet. Okay, so the next question is uh, more into operating systems. You already said that you did not look into those, but did you think about doing that in the future? Because the same text processing software on the Windows and Linux probably has a different energy usage. Yeah, you know, we would like to do this, so this is something that we would like to do research on, but right now this uh, there is no going to be a blue angel for operating systems. There's too little of them. So if we do something and, you know, the blue angel certificate is a lot of work, then there's the question of the jury, well, is there um, enough people who uh, who use that or people people who do this? So we're going to research that, but in another area. And what we looked at is software that is running on several oper operating systems, but we're not that far to have any palpable evidence. But of course, we do know that pro uh, software consumes differently uh, running on different operating systems. So we are aware of that, and we're working on it. So there was a so was a was a talk on Bits and Bäume, so that free software is not automatically more energy efficient. So 25 years ago, uh, Niklas Wirth from Zurich wrote on the software explosion. Um, so the English appli, his English appli is still findable on his uh, web presence. So my question is. Is the criteria for the Blue Angel, uh, will that influence what, uh, for example, state agencies will buy in hardware and software? And what, uh, how does this correlate to the digital pact? Uh, where a lot of money is uh, spent on devices for schools and 
Das wäre schön. Seid ihr dann Kontakt mit Similar Institutions? Um, well, we are a scientific state agency, but what we can do is that we um, have some impact on politics with our results. And what we could do is that in the administration or the federal administration, that the criteria have to be observed when um, buying hardware for federal agencies. That's a start, but uh, next year, yes, it's actually next year, um, then we're going to have the discussion with the federal states of Germany. So uh, I'm going to talk to some representatives of them and that is one thing, So because the pressure is increasing, which is uh, makes us happy. Uh, at the federal um, or at the federal state level, when people buy hardware there, yes, we can do something, but I have to say that we since two 2008, we have a green IT initiative on the federal state level in Germany and we have reduced energy consumption by 40% and people from the industry, uh, they glare at me when I say, oh, well, you always say you are the best of the world, but you aren't. Can you just prove it? Because we can. And there's a lot of work to do right there. Uh, but there where we can have an impact, we, do we try hard and we also try at the um, European level level. Uh, uh, yes, and I will uh, have something more. So I work for for a um, member of the Bundestag and that's really, really hard to do. So there's another question. Okay, next question. So as far as I understood, you, the efficiency is mostly focused, uh, so your research is mostly focused on software, so, but efficiency is not only about how much less uh, energy is used in the end, because when you looked at the video players, um, when they get more efficient, then maybe they implement higher resolutions and use more power again. Um, is this observed in your measurements in any ways because computers have become uh, magnitudes more efficient? Well, uh, yes, exactly, but it's difficult to measure this rebound effect. Um, I totally agree. So in the moment where something gets simpler, we have this rebound effect. So you don't have to actually get uh, drive to, um, to, to a video rental. You can do a contract and then you can stream videos for the whole day. So uh, making things simpler has dramatic increases in energy consumption. And yeah, so the, the only thing that we could do up to now is to measure the life cycle of the products that um, are involved and that we say, okay, the software has to run on five-year-old hardware. So that's the first and only thing we can do. You are absolutely invited, if you have ideas, to, to work with us. We, we, we cannot know everything. And since we started 2012 or 13 for the first time, um, so back then um, there were three people when we had the first discussion with the industry. So that was really, really difficult to get researchers, to get interested persons. It has changed, but um, uh, when we had this, the jury discussion with the, for the Blue Angel, it was the room was packed in a way I haven't seen before. So for the first time there were new faces in there. And I think that the topic needs time. Maybe we need other criteria, but we're not stopping. So if you have a good idea, then yes, please talk to us. The address should be on the slides. What we also do is the energy consumption over time. So while you have uh, the, the Blue Angel certification, there's um, there's a limit on, of 10% of increase of actually of the energy consumption of your product. So that's what already was on the talk. You have to measure all the time while you have the certification. You have to measure every update so um, that you can actually prove the energy consumption does not uh, increase by more than 10%. And also to uh, talk about why it has increased at all. We have not presented all of the criteria. So that was one idea why I said, okay, now fun is over. We talked about the European level. We have the power management um, that has has to be active on computers and there's software who actually disables the power management of computers and there's a lot of more com uh, software products of that. 
um, software products uh, that are on network, um, they expect the computer to be always on. Well, as a developer, you know we have to think about if that's actually a good idea or if we don't, we ha don't we have a better idea for that so that the computer can switch to low energy mode and still retain data. Okay, another question from yeah. the internet. Does open source software have the possibility to get a Blue Angel if there is no heuristic uh, person um, there? Yes, of course, that's possible. We have the uh, research on that. Uh, we have some lawyers who check that and and the, we have uh, st good connections to open source developers. If all criteria are met, then that's not a problem. Uh, next, another question. So regarding the energy measurements, so because we have a, a project for measuring electronics as well, so we're working on configurable software measurement systems and so you said during the energy measurement you uh, fixed some aspects um, about the computers you measured and did you also look at configuration aspects because for example there can be a factor of about 100 for database management systems. No, we have not checked several configurations. We know that this is happening, but we could not do any research in that. So that's uh, interesting that you do this. I would like to talk to you. And there's probably a lot of people who are going to, uh, would like to talk to you. Microphone number two. Okay, so for ma if we don't look at things being bought for public entities, um, is there... Uh, something that is better for people that buy Blue Angel hardware or software? Well, that's difficult. You know, the, the user can actually, when, when the person buys software, then they can see and uh, is aware of the label. It's on there, so the vendor can actually use it for, for advertisements. But, you know, with all Blue Angel products, it's, um, it, it targets people who are very conscious about the problem. There's no more that we can do there. Another question. So, back to desktop computers versus uh, data centers. Is there any um, any approximation for the proportionality between those two? Well, I have something in the back of my hand. I'm not really sure about it. So it was, I think, half of the power consumption of IT is in the cloud. But um, don't take my word for it. So we have a lot of desktop software. So people are thinking about Word and Excel. But I'm talking about um, products uh, in um, that are in-house developments for administrations. And that's desktop software. And I'm also talking about smaller tools and, well, if you think about the carbon footprint, there's a lot of software that's running on desktop. There is uh, a couple of them. And because I have to present that to the jury that we think about a market, it's not that bad. And so I think it's 50-50 desktop and cloud. Okay, next question. Um, do you al did you also certify your own software? <laughs> Um, well, we, we couldn't because there I the Blue Angel is not released right now, but um, so it has just been decided in December that the, this uh, certificate is going to be there. So, of course, we're going to get certified, but it's open source. Yeah. Next question.
Uh, currently, we use software that is being used a lot in our environment, and we looked at people, okay, how, how do people use that? Of course, we uh, cannot rule this out because we cannot do measurements worldwide. We have looked for statistics, how software is being used, what functionality is being used, but there's no data on that. So um, there was this idea how how is software being run in the in the at the university, but then again it's privacy and data protection, so we could not do that. So we cannot rule it out that our standard usage models do actually not um, um, measure the standard usage. But we think the core functionalities should be in there, and with open source software we actually talked to the developers and th we um, developed together and we talked with the companies and so uh, we rely on that they uh, whether where do user questions come from for a product for okay next question so here in germany we have this tradition of um, software cheating on tests how would you prevent software behaving differently under tests um, and then setting wrong um, incentives because the software is locally running less and starts using the cloud more, for example, but uh, then again using more network resources, but still gets uh, the Blue Angel. Yeah, that's why in the first step we would like only to certify software that is only running locally on the local machine. So because we don't have a usage model for data centers, and uh, so if if computing uh, goes to moves to the cloud from uh, from uh, software, and then we have to think about it. So that means it's only a first step, and it's using the local computer. Are you sure there are no behavior differences just because the device is under test? Well, there there is no fixed lab situation. So what we do is we are um, checking in labs that we know there is auditioning or there's a uh, peer review on that. Uh, on the uh, if the data is plausible that we receive from the labs and we, for example we have to check whether the software actually runs on a five-year-old reference system and that means there's going to be persons who check that and our procedure is well that's not unheard of we also have it with data centers there's also data a blue angel for data centers and you could tell anything there so there's uh, reviewers that actually um, check the numbers, look at the numbers, and uh, that just look at the validity and the believability of the numbers and the measurements of it. But um, honestly, we have a 40-year 40 uh, 40 history of the Blue Angel, and there has been no scandals in that time. And I think that's uh, something because we are that good, yes. But the other reason is that people who actually want to be certified, they want to prove they are good. So the worst thing would be that uh, they wouldn't be as good as they were when they tried to be certified. So we are the first ones to know when something doesn't uh, work. And so there, there, there was a competitor of a data center who was wrong about the Blue Angel. Uh, and so there was um, a case in there, but it turned out to be wrong. And so we have, we have uh, companies that go through our painstakingly process. And it's also not, not uh, very uh, cheap. It's expensive. And yeah, talking about time, we are at the end of time. So there's a lot of, pe a lot of uh, demand for discussion. So let's talk to uh, the speakers now or later. And, but uh, I think you will have an opportunity to ask questions. Thanks again for the questions and a very, very big hand for the talk. Thank you. Thank you for coming.